This is an, an age of disruption, of profound revolutionary change. What we're really asking ministers is to empower the ambassadors. The only thing that you really push forth is the truth. You don't see many women represented when it comes to the decisions as to how to handle the pandemic. When the Data Governance Act was, was uh, negotiated, there were not a lot of companies weighing in. It was really rapidly uh, wrapped up. Um, you could also say that maybe it fails to excite the audience and, and the public out there, the whole data strategy. What's, what's your take on that? Uh? Yeah, I, I, I was part of the negotiation team on, on that one as well. And, and I, it was a bit of, bit of theoretical. It's uh, free willing, you get a stamp of the trustworthiness uh, once you join uh, as an uh, intermediator. Uh, uh, so it's a possibility. So uh, to try to create a market. And uh, I also have a feeling that I don't see the excitement everywhere. What we need on, uh, on that is the data spaces and commissions would really push it. Uh, the, the actor should take part. Uh, and I'm afraid when I sometimes hear the national data space thinking should be right away European because we should have the European data markets and European uh, data economy in our mind all the time. Unfortunately, I sometimes still hear the, the ideas that you start from somewhere. And this is maybe energy is a, a, a country issue. No, we have also the energy markets that is European wide. And if not, we should really quickly do it in, in these circumstances of the dependency on the Russian fossils. So th yes, this is piece of the puzzle needed. DGA was one that's kind of enabling thing. And I, I'm pretty sure that we need more uh, uh, as the Data Act is now giving you the more access to data so that we can develop more. Um, and I say we, uh, the European SMEs, to be on board on the global competition. So uh, I like very much thinking on, on from the user perspective, but at the same time, I all the time think also on the small businesses. When they create something, when they innovate, and, and Cecilia mentioned that they do not have the, the, the skills always, or they do lack the thrust. Why should I share everything I have with one big company and then I not even having access to what I'm creating? So this is really the economical uh, uh, screening mm -hmm. that who get access and who get benefits. Uh, some, somebody was using the word that are we really a kind of data proletariat, proletariat that you only like buy an equipment and then your data just disappears and you don't even see it. And the same happens for the many, many, many companies. Not very small ones also. There are whole ecosystems that you kind of lose the touch to your customer, lose the touch on your own uh, equipment. I was using uh, the, the tractors. I'm not specialist at all on the agriculture side. But if you buy a tractor and then you want to make your farm more productive, more environmental, uh, whatever, more friendly to your workers and so, and then the tractor data only goes to the owner of the tractor. Mm -hmm. So that should not be the case for the data economy. Yeah. One line that was uh, interesting about what, what you said is like, yeah, um, of course we are in, in, in Brussels, we are uh, here uh, making that puzzle, pieces of the puzzle, but of course it needs to happen on the ground, also with the data spaces you said, like, and it needs to benefit SMEs. And I want to uh, uh, to switch maybe to uh, Mr. Bright on, on, on that one, because that's something that the commission has been repeating the the the, uh, the data act needs to benefit to to SMEs. We need to make sure that they get the most out of it. But how do you uh, make that happen on the ground? Because here in Brussels, the big uh, manufacturers are already unpacking the bill. Um, but how do you make it uh, work for for SMEs on the ground in Germany? Well, there are a lot of SMEs in Germany, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, my department is responsible for the Data Governance Act too, and is responsible for the AI Act and now for the Data Act too. So um, I can uh, reassure you that we have the best interest of small and medium enterprises uh, in mind, especially in Germany, where we have 3.5 million small and medium enterprises and we are um, a, a, a huge contribution to our uh, cross-domestic product 
is coming from small and medium enterprises. Um, I think it's, it's a twofold approach. The first approach is we need, um, and this is the this is the larger goal of um, the endeavor that the European um, Union right now is um, uh, undertaking, is that we need clear rules for data in the European Union and in the European market. This means Data Governance Act, Data Act, AI Act, plus Digital Markets Act, Digital Services Act, they kind of need to have one coherent approach. The coherency of this approach is the most important part because small and medium enterprises have less capabilities to tackle legal issues, to, to be almost, uh, to, to take into account all the bureaucracy that's coming with regulation, to take into account all the legal obligations that come, to, um, that come with regulation. So what we need to do is make it easy and accessible. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, to um, to strengthen their position, to strengthen their position vis-a-vis -vis the large-scale providers, um, especially in the data sphere, we have um, concentrating markets. We have um, strong negotiation positions, especially when it comes to cloud providers and such. So, what we need to do is addressing um, um, these these balancing issues when it comes to small and medium enterprises vis-a-vis -vis large scale companies. And when it comes to small medium enterprises and large scale companies, vis-a-vis -vis, um, the, the tech giants that are now um, um, dominating the market. And in all these um, regulations that I just mentioned, the German Ministry of Economic Affairs has played its role to foster these, um, these goals. And um, as I said, right now we are in the beginning of the negotiation to the of the data act so i cannot go into detail there but make it easy make it approachable and thread carefully and try to balance their um their negotiation position of small and medium enterprises especially vis-a-vis -vis these two groups that i mentioned i've heard easy and approachable that the regulation should be uh mrs bonefeld al um that's of course a question for you as well we've already seen in the data act that there are some uh, exemptions. There are already some industries going into uh, maybe more vertical regulation. We've seen, for example, the, uh, the, the the car industry having their own regulation, maybe in agriculture and and health as well, of course. Um, how do you make a regulation easy and accessible for SMEs and for unicorns? You mentioned them, uh, but also in some way. Um, um, that you deal with these, these, um, yeah, this, this intention to have carve outs and exemption. There's also carve out for personal computers, smartphones, um, and and etc. So how how do you keep that balance? And first of all, I want to highlight that I don't hope that we are regulating uh, just to say there are a few co uh, dominating companies. If this is an enabling uh, exercise, it should be enabling and not uh, necessarily restricting. Uh, and we have to remember that a company also needs to develop. Let's take some of the bigger European companies. You know, they actually do their services and earn money, maybe not on their products, but on the services that they get from the tractor or they get from other uh, devices. And if we just uh, leave the data open to any uh, other player to take, they will not have this competitive advantage. So we need to, to, to stay in force that, you know, companies also have the right to um, create value on that data. We cannot just say it's open to everyone. Uh, second, I would say the enabling effect for SMEs right now is not necessarily they, that they cannot get the data. I think, you know, uh, increased switching elements, et cetera, of course. However, if we, if we look at what is their problem, it is basically the access that they need to ring the doorbell of every hospital to get their data on x-rays on on cancer, or uh, they have to ring every doorbell to ask for financial data to do a, an app or an innovation. So, so I think some of the, the things that we should boost is some of the things that we already looked in the Data Governance Act of the Intermedia, where the, it is um, voluntary donations. And you have many member states who have these actors, which is really boosting the data economy. Second of all, they don't have uh, the right skills. So we are missing some of these enabling uh, elements instead of only looking at how to regulate everything. Third, I want to highlight, again, I said it before, you know, uh, European scale-ups, they have, uh, you know, uh, the majority of their market outside Europe. So we need to align if we want this to be a data economy and how we boost our own economy and the innovation of our, re uh, our uh, uh, European Union as being like trend setting for the world, 
then we need to get our major market players along on this journey. Um, if not, we will just gonna cut you uh, off you there know, because that's, that's our point. And, that's and wait. That's a point you already made, of course. Um, enabling versus restricting. I want to get back to David no. on that. Like, uh, I can imagine that when you we look at the consumer and, and data and, and the data that he's generating, I think you might be more at the restricting side, or, or am I wrong there? Well, mm, I wouldn't say restricting. First of all, I, by where the discussion is going already, um, we are starting to forget the person that's driving the tractor without whom there will be no data generated. So let's not forget that. And not, let's not forget that the, that person has a very important role to play and should have a say in terms of whether the data that the, where the data that the tractor generates goes. So that person also needs to have strong rights, I wouldn't say, call those rights uh, restrictions. And uh, I think it's important that we talk about rights and that we talk about protections. And I, I don't think that we can say that um, Protecting people is an obstacle to innovation or, or restricts enabling what companies uh, can do. We shouldn't approach it from that perspective. It all comes down to the, the idea of what uh, Mrs. Uh, Stagger said in the beginning. What's the objective here? The objective here is to create a better society at the end of the day. So what we all want to do is to make sure that we enable um, healthy innovation, societally, uh, innovation that is valuable for society, that everyone can flourish and that people's rights are protected So, and empowered. So that's why we need to have these rights. That's why we also need to build in the safeguards in the regulation to protect people from um, suffering the same issues that they're suffering, for example, now in the context of the personal data and, G and the GDPR, so that uh, you are just clicking away your rights and your data can be used for anything. So I think that this is important why the, the provisions that are in the Data Act also have those safe safeguards that protect the people, for example, against profiling, against uh, the, the use of dark patterns so that they are tricked into giving access to the data for purposes they wouldn't want to that data to be used for. So all these are different elements of the puzzle, which in my opinion are very important to create the balance everyone's talking about. Of course, um, when we're speaking about um, protection, safeguards, um, this is of course something uh, we relate of course to the other blocks in the world. Um, US and China are moving very fast on this on industrial data. Um, using them and 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 and, and um, benefiting from it um, is this something that we that we're maybe n too naive in because we're setting up data brokers we're setting up data spaces but maybe that's too much of regulation and too less of innovation yes there is too little innovation and <laughs> this is why, why, why we are acting and doing uh, so that uh, you can get these data out of the silos and I, I think the silo is also when it's a monopoly using it alone or not using it so having more innovations is more players on ground. This is what we have believed, the market economy. I don't know if the, uh, suddenly the data I is a broker that you stop believing in market economy, but instead believing in the monopolies being the most effective way to go forward. And this is very much on the competition, uh, the whole package, that who has right to get into the data made by me, or made by an SME. We have talked a lot about the personal data of the GDPR, but there is not actually anything like that for the SME. Mm -hmm. Creating the data, there's no protection. They can plea and negotiate business to business contract. So SME of three persons, startup of uh, 10 persons with the meta. Give me that uh, 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 seriously. What kind of negotiation is that going to be? So yes, here we do give some principles for the market economy on the digitalized world, which is the data economy. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yes, China is going fast, but this is not the model to follow, uh, not for me. Uh, USA is going fast. Yes, we have a, a, a cooperation plans. We know that we don't have start from the tabula rasa, as I wish, but we don't start there. We know that the 90% of our data is handled transatlantic. But yes, we know that we can set uh, some democratic legislation 
And this is one piece of the democratic legislation. And we are openly discussing on the TTC now on the many, many, many topics on the, uh, on the um, uh, transatlantic data flows. We had here the uh, Didier on the uh, transfers, data transfers. Vestager was mentioning yeah, the TTC. So mm -hmm. it's going on. And, and once again, the big tech is not equal USA. Okay. On GDPR, that's something uh, that's interested, uh, interesting, of course, because um, the question is also this data act. Data Act. How will it relate uh, to the GDPR? There is, of course, this this line in the Data Act that says, like, when it comes to personal data, um, the 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 GDPR is is uh, primordial, of course. But of course, a lot of companies have mixed data sets. They have mixed data so it's with personal data, non-personal data. Um, I think that's maybe something that uh, Mrs. Bonnefeldtal and and uh, Mr. Mr. Bright uh, want to comment on. How do you uh, keep those two bills in check with each other? How do they relate? And and uh, yeah, Mrs. Bonnefeldtal, maybe that's something you can you can weigh in on. I mean, if we look on uh, look at uh, GDPR, I mean, it's been uh, cumbersome to uh, to get into a situation where it's actually implemented. But it does; it is a mechanism that is unknown for everybody now, also the SMEs. So the more we can use what we have, the better it is. How can we align it fully, both in uh, in the way that we do things, also protections, which there there are already protections. I mean, non-personal data that can be related directly to an individual is personal data, according to the GDPR. So this data cannot be used as non-personal data. So, so we already have those protections. And uh, and I would really um, I would really uh, encourage that we use the same implementation methods, the same framework, and ex if we want to expand that, then look if we actually have gaps or if we have interpretations that we need to uh, make more precise, because this is what the SMEs know right now, and adding another layer might really make it extremely difficult for them. Mr. Bright, a comment from you on that? Yes, thank you. Um, um, I think the most important part right now is clarification, and it's the same with the GDPR. Uh, in Germany, the Business Administration for digital, uh, of the Digital Economy, Bitkom, has uh, published a survey a few months ago where they um, asked their, um, their companies, and 90% of the companies said that they kind of canceled projects because GDPR and clarity. And I think this is the most important part um, um, of our work, to, that clarification is what we are looking for. Because clarification makes two things possible. It gives security for investments, for money, and it gives security for data relations. And the security of data relations um, is the most important part, especially for small and medium enterprises. As I said, they have a problem tackling so much regulation um, within their small confined resources. So um, establishing European data spaces is what we are looking for too. But if you want the small medium enterprises and, and the companies take part in these, um, in these um, data spaces, we need them to be sure what the regulation means for them. And this is a problem of GDPR right now as the survey of Bitcoin shows. The second thing is, um, and this is something that I'm, I'm kind of struggling um, to find the right balance to is whenever we are talking about companies and customers, it's a, it's a dichotomy, but it isn't because um, we are in our souls um, divided in two. We are all customers and we are citizens. As a citizen, I want my data to be protected, especially when it comes to health, especially when it comes to private sensitive data, I want to be protected. But as a customer, I want convenient products. And if we kind of fail with our regulation to set up the, 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 to, to an, an, an environment for innovation, then the customer, my, my customer soul, will still buy non-European products because they are way more accessible, they are way more convenient. And this is what's going on right now. A lot of the products that European customers buy are of non-European heritage, which is fine. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm all in for, um, for global trade. But if you want to foster European innovation, then over-regulation is a real problem. On the other hand, and that's the thing, this um, clarity and that security for my personal data is what a lot of people are negotiating for. And, and they say, look, we need to not um, stifle innovation, but innovation is second. The first thing is data protection. And as a lawmaker and as a public official and as a um, governmental employee, we need to thread that 
um, balance carefully because it's in the end um, what I said um, it's the most important part when it comes to clarity that people actually know what it means when they buy a product know what it means when they use a service know what it means when they offer a service or partake in the European data space a balance I uh, uh, keep in mind. I'm going to throw in a, a question uh, from the audience. Uh, very important, of course, to have some audience participation. Um, the question is from Adam Zable, and he says, like, I was hoping to see more in the Data Act in the way of mandatory B2G data sharing. Could you expand on the discussions that led to the current wording? And in what ways would you like to see the act evolve as it gets amended? It's, of course, a bit difficult to um, to um, expand on the discussions on the current wording because that's uh, a part of the commission, of course, and we don't have a commission uh, official here. Uh, but maybe let's go to get into that, that uh, mandatory B2G data sharing in times of crisis because there are other questions coming in on that as well. Um, of course, um, as we have seen, crisis can be uh, come a very long time. We had the corona pandemic, now there is the, the war in uh, Ukraine. Maybe indeed on the wording, as we go further, as we start the work on the Data Act, um, uh, or rather you, as you and you, uh, your colleagues started the work on the Data Act. Yeah, wh where is this going, this, this provision on in times of crisis, exceptional need, um, there should be uh, um, indeed data sharing from businesses to government. Um, can you elaborate on, on will there be some kind of annex that like describing the situations or should it be more general? I think there should be some restrictions or uh, clarity how to do it so not to make uh, businesses afraid. Because I of course understand once you are a business, you invest, you create something, it's also part of your <laughs> income creation in the end. But we, uh, I like very much what has changed since the last term when I was also working on the digital single market. Now we talk about the data society and not only market, because this is what we are doing. We are doing the European as a society. And when there is a health crisis, uh, a mortal uh, health crisis, we need to act uh, as a politicians, as the lawmakers, as a, as the governments. So, but then there are already existing models that you pay a little. You get the, the telco uh, uh, knowledge, how the people are moving, and then you can uh, make an analysis, and then you can do. So it, it's not also the taboo that you sometimes pay something to get, get it. But then it's also impossible to think that we could not analyze at all the pandemic, how it's evolving, because we have data in the silos and they just want, don't want to give it to uh, governments. So I, I think that it should be there, it's good it's there for the, ne the next reason, uh, and, and uh, in the, the, the open general one is maybe not realistic and, and nobody wants to have uh, such a China model government. But then uh, it shouldn't be taboo also for the business that, yes, sometimes they hold the data. That is very, very important. I think so it comes uh, more difficult when you think that you have like externalized some of your health businesses and then the health data is developed by the companies. And then you notice that you actually need that health data of your own citizens of earlier public uh, hospitals or still public hospitals. But then the data are being externalized. How to get that back? We have examples that you actually uh, pay more a year that you pay uh, that, that you sold it, for example. So they are also gray zone. Yeah. I think I one. To, but yeah. If I just add one uh, hot topic sorry, that I, I guess that will be hot is also the format in what you have to give the data for other companies, business to business, or to the government. To the government. And I think that's the I nasty to, point yeah. that you want to give the raw material <laughs> that nobody can use it, and that's yeah. not the way. I want to, to confront uh, Mr. Bonafeld Dahl on that because, of course, you mentioned that before that that's a contentious point. We're speaking here indeed about formats, about uh, the duration, the, the, the length of, of on, uh, w when it needs to be shared. What's your take on that? Um, is this going to do into the right direction according to you? Um, so I actually, I mean, I, it's not that we oppose it. On, on the contrary, I would say, with the crisis that we have seen now, it might it might be on cyber attacks the, the next time, data needs to be shared. I mean, for example, cybersecurity, we are a big, big, big believer in sharing a lot of vulnerabilities up front. And I think w one thing we need to discuss, what are the resilience areas where governance, uh, governments needs to take care of us as citizens, as companies? And we need to define those. I mean, right now, even in, this, uh, in, in the NIST directive, 
countries cannot agree on what a critical entity is, let's be concrete and let's have a resilience strategy that that uh, that uh, the companies also can support explicitly. Um, and but can you make that that specific? Is there did, do there need to be a list of of, of exceptional situations in, in in kind of an annex to the bill or? or well, I, I think yeah, I think it mixed. I think we need to discuss what the situations are because if not, how can we even be ready if we have no idea what it it can be? So it will actually also enhance the resilience, the digital resilience discussions. Where is it that we need to have, uh, you know, more stock or more initiatives on innovation right now to be resilient as 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 a society? So I think that concrete discussion needs to be taken. And after the concrete discussions, we need to also to discuss the implementation of it, because if we are going to have government by government implementation, like we have on everything now. You know, it's not. We will not have a, a a European data market, and this is what companies need. Yeah. Right now, the the biggest struggle for them is that they need to deal with every government in Europe to do anything. And each time there's a problem, they need to go to a data authority in each country to discuss with them. Also, this is not sustainable. So we have problems in the way that we implement. And maybe making one one last point. Let's say that we find this, uh, you know, list. We find also the right formulation, and we also get, you know, uh, you know, some kind of contractual framework for SMEs, etc. How are we going to implement again, country by country? I don't think so. We need to make sandbox, you know, where we try this, we try out with concrete companies these initiatives of regulation before we put them into force. If not, okay. we have no idea of the unintended... Uh, a sandbox to, to test that implementation. Um, maybe as a last point, because I've heard it throughout the debate, left and right, and it's an important one, of course, the people, the skills. Um, there was this remark that it will be difficult to set up a European data economy without the people, without the skills. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bright, I want to, to, to pause that to you, that, that, that uh, question. Of course, in, in Europe, there is a lack of ICT professionals towards 2030. There is this target of 20 million. Um, how will we get there? What's what's the magic or the, what are the silver bullet there to make that happen? I think, uh, to be frank, I think the, the silver bullet is having an established and working data economy in Europe. Because right now, when you look um, where exactly um, the brain drain goes to and where exactly people go to work and go to start their companies and go into um, um, work in data analytics and stuff, it's these parts in the world where um, you actually make a difference, where you have huge wages, yes, but where the companies are that kind of change the world right now and that um, shape the world we are in right now. So if we establish in Europe a digital ecosystem based on the regulation, based on the innovation, innovative power of our companies, where you can um, strive for your dreams, where you can um, actually shape the world from our, from Europe and where you get have the access to other talent, other um, BC to a good regulation, then I think the brain drain won't happen. And um, the, then the, 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 the bright minds of Europe will have the opportunity to shape the world when it comes to digital innovations and digital services from within Europe. Uh, Mr. Martin, is that something that you also want to weigh in on, on that, that question of people? I mean, it starts with, with consumers, of course, using uh, the, the data and, and be part of that data economy. Um, instead of being on, on the regulatory side, how do we get people excited about this? Well, I think it, it's about telling them all the possibilities that uh, can come out of them being more proactive or, or on deciding the use of the data. So wider access to services, uh, more competition and benefits in terms of uh, new services that can happen. I think all these things are important to, to get people on board, uh, let's say. But I also want to be cautious because it's, it's important not to put the burden on people because you're going to have to be an expert on everything. So you're going to have to be an expert on managing your, your personal and non-personal data. We start kind of saying that everybody has to use PIMS and all these acronyms that nobody yet understands. And uh, it's important. So yes, uh, education and training skills, it, all of that is important. But it's also important to make sure that we don't put all the burden on people, because otherwise uh, you basically leave them um, open to, to abuse that we have mm -hmm. seen in other areas. Not all the burden on people. Uh, Mrs. Bonifatal, I saw you wanted to chime in on that as well. Maybe a last yeah. word, because we're uh, running out of time. Thank you so much. No, uh, burden? 
how can that be a burden? I mean, we are a democracy. We need basically to make sure that we have digital citizens. Everybody is using a smartphone. Everybody is living in the digital world. And if you don't know the basics of it, I mean, how can you be a part of it? I, I see that we try to regulate. I mean, Europe is the most re well-regulated continent in the world. We try to re only regulate our way through this. There is only one way to make our safe in the future, to make our competitive of the future. It is making sure that we give our younger generations the right education. And if we don't start doing that, we still have member states. Again, it's a member state competence. Nobody puts mandatory uh, computer thinking and coding on their uh, curricula. It is, sorry, it's ridiculous. I mean, we need to enable people to live and take decisions on, in the digital world. And unless we do start doing that, we might regulate all everything we want, but we will not succeed. There are some harsh words to start, uh, to, to, to close off the debate with mandatory uh, computational thinking and uh, coding in class. I wonder how many people here in the audience had a mandatory uh, coding class. I don't see that many uh, fingers going up. Um, I'm going to wrap up this debate. It was very interesting. I keep in mind that it's going to be a balance. That's a challenge for you to tread that, uh, that balance. Um, I invite the audience to uh, stay uh, seated or uh, stay connected because at 11.45 we have a spotlight discussion coming up on the algorithms behind AI and it will be moderated by my colleague Clotilde Goyard. So uh, thanks for this and stay connected. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.